नमस्ते टू एवरीवन नमस्ते कुमार भैया गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते एवरीवन सो वी हैव टेकन दिस असाइनमेंट यस्टरडे नाउ इफ यू रिकॉलेक्ट ऑल दैट हैव वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग सिंस डे 1 सो वी स्टार्टेड बाय डिस्कसिंग whether happiness is my innate nature or a <coughs> external influence and we could see that when i ensure right understanding right feeling and right thought in me then happiness is innate to me the source of happiness is inside me else i have to depend on something outside for happiness and there are two primary things one favorable sensation from the body and second favorable feeling from others for which i have to be dependent on outside for my happiness and it is neither definite nor continuous there is no definite completion point and i am enslaved <clears throat> having discussed that then we look at the meaning of human consciousness the meaning of happiness meaning of prosperity and we saw that essentially through all this we need to ensure our living with human consciousness then we started discussing human being and we saw that human being is coexistence of self and body and within the self we can see there are four responses knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling these basically make the response of the self <clears throat> while in the body there is only response of recognizing and fulfilling and if the assuming is not guided by knowing then we are in problems but if the assuming is guided by knowing then we are resolved having discussed that we also saw that if we i assume self to be the body then for the sake of continuity of happiness i have to go for uh, accumulation of unlimited physical facilities and which is not possible and the continuity of happiness the continuity of prosperity is also not ensured but i then get trapped in a kind of vicious cycle now we have taken this assignment to study <clears throat> note the quantities of physical facilities you currently have clothes shoes appliances instruments vehicle house etc do you think you have sufficient quantities of each of these physical facilities or do you think you need more on what basis did you come to this conclusion observe all the physical facilities in your house and find the purpose of each is the facility meant for nurturing the body protecting the body or rehabilitating the body or something else so categorically i can look at all the facilities in my house and find out what is the purpose of each i can evaluate the availability of the physical facilities in my house if you decide you need more physical facility check on what basis you have come to this decision is your decision based on self verification based on natural acceptance or without any self verification check if you get caught up in the loop of accumulation and deprivation at times why does it happen note your observations and we can discuss them so this assignment we have taken yesterday and we took some examples also to illustrate how we get caught up how we are not able to make out the purpose of physical facilities that i am aspiring for and how i am not able to ensure the continuity of happiness and prosperity within me so this is very important to reflect we can reflect at it in a very a uh, subtle manner also and in a gross manner also so overall i can see what is my vision in my life and how much physical facilities i am aiming for how do i make sure that they are enough for me on what basis do i decide what is enough for me so all those things can be done you know if i am able to do it successfully then i can proactively make out how much physical facilities i require in my whole life span and then work for it and then feel fulfilled after some time that yes now i have more than what i require so if you have uh, done this exercise if you have given a serious thought to this noted something you can share your reflection or if you have any question you can raise your hand any reflection on this
it is an important issue we'll see that many times we get caught up in this loop we are not able to make out exactly how much i require and a lot of time in our life gets spent working for physical facilities which are not required isn't it we can see that relationship holds a higher priority in our family over physical facilities and the relationship can be fulfilled the feeling of prosperity can be ensured only with right understanding but many times we miss it out yesterday someone shared a video in which a person is saying that there is a plot of land by his house which costs in crores now maybe 2 to 3 crores now and the grandfather had purchased this plot of land so that it will work as an asset for the children and after some time he died and somehow the children are now fighting with each other they have family feud they are they have lodged complaint in the police and then they are also fighting in the court and their children are now not on talking terms the grandfather had kept this plan so that it work as an asset for the children and it has become a kind of problem for the children it has disturbed the whole family the relationship is spoiled so these kinds of things might be happening in our extended family around our family we do something with a particular purpose but if the right understanding is not ensured the feeling of relationship is not ensured it becomes a self defeating program uh, good morning everyone sir am i audible yeah audible okay sir so just i am sharing my uh, some feelings to you sir that means sir uh, in my home my uh, me and my son actually uh, are there my husband is out of station for his job so sir <clears throat> what i do is that just it's not Uh, only after doing uhv but just before doing uhv also sir what i used to do is that i don't want my home to look very messy means i want a clear space i want my um, room uh, to be uh, not filled with many physical facilities so whenever i buy something so before that i always think that this is required to me or not even sir what happened my kitchen is um, just uh, beside my living room if any guest Uh, sits in the living room they can easily see my kitchen so uh, if as we two are there in the house therefore i have the um, kitchen also uh, means i don't uh, i don't place any utensil which is not required required to me if any guest come then i take it out from the cupboard and then again i place it inside the cupboard so that is actually my habit but after doing uhb Uh, sir whenever i go somewhere and i see some crockery uh, previously i used to buy mane i become crazy and yes i should buy but after doing uhv always questions come in my mind that is it required to me now or oh, no so i should not buy if if it requires in some other time then okay i will buy so this is the feeling um, what i have sir nice nice didi <laughs> Right. now we are able to see the purpose behind the things earlier we got somewhat attracted towards the look of facilities towards the touch of facilities and when we went uh, in the market in a mall or something then even though we did not require we went for purchasing them and we spent so much money you know purchasing things which might not be required even if the sofa is okay we try to change it even if the carpet is okay we try to change it even if the curtains are okay we try to change it unnecessarily now we can see that it is working well why to go for a new one in fact it so happens no that as we keep on discussing in the introductory workshop also that when we have lack of physical facility we feel unhappy and deprived but when we have the physical facility we start looking for 100 other things isn't it just to just for the sake of happiness nice nice didi so like there is an ad no on olx or of olx on the television it shows a punch line which says bech de so whatever you have in the house first sell it off and go and get a new one in the short video of story of stuff it is told that in us 99% of the things are 
thrown away in six months on an average. Nice. If any other reflection is there. So by looking at the response, like we are able to see that now many of us are mostly resolved on the issue of physical facilities, that yes, the need is limited. And this is something that we can make out simply. So earlier we might have a craving for new physical facilities, more and more physical facilities, but that craving is largely gone. That craving is no longer there. This is very good to see. Very good to see. Now we are able to assign a higher priority relationship. And we are spending time regularly for right understanding. But again, I'll say that it may be the case that at times we get lost. At times, like we may not be going for accumulation of physical facilities, but still we may be looking for new physical facilities, even though the old ones are working well. And this is some doable exercise that you look at the commodities in your house and try to find out the purpose. You know, what is the purpose behind each of these? And is it fulfilling the purpose or not? You'll see that if you have a close friend of yours, generally do not make him or her sit in the drawing room. Right, you take it. You take the person to your personal room and discuss there. But if you do not have that feeling of relationship, there is some formal kind of interaction only. Who make the other sit in the drawing room and then you know, keep on waiting for the other to go? Does it happen? So generally, when we have the feeling of relationship, the physical facilities take the back seat. But when with the feeling of relationship is not there, then Generally, we are more focused on physical facilities. So we have to see whether we are able to place right understanding as the first priority in life, whether we are able to see the difference between self and body, whether we are assigning happiness to physical facilities or not. You know, these all things have to be looked into very carefully, very seriously. It is an important ta and doable task also. Nice, nice. If you are not caught up in the loop, very good to see. Yeah, then we can go to the content part. There are no more reflections. Is there anyone in the group right now who has not made any journal? If not, then please do it. You know? And at least keep on observing that I am able to see that I do not accumulate physical facilities. I am able to see that all the physical facilities that I have at home are meant only for these three purposes and nothing else. Try to look into these realities and make a very kind of uh, critical evaluation of your current state of living. Right? Not that everything you need to share here, but at least make a very critical evaluation of yourself. Observe yourself sharply. Okay? Question everything that you have, everything that you do, everything that you think everything that you desire try to question it so yesterday we were discussing this and we had taken the assignment in this regard also that a common misunderstanding is that i assume the self to be the body and then i assign respect to physical facility and since the need for respect is continuous then we try to go for more and more physical facilities assuming the need to be unlimited and by all means we are trying to have accumulation of physical facilities and within oneself, we feel deprived, isn't it? And then we get caught up in this too. So, if you just take a print of this slide and put up in your office, right? If anyone comes to your office, you have a lot to share, a lot to discuss. Anyone can ask, what does this mean? And then you start discussing. Okay. So, deprivation is, of course, not acceptable to us naturally. But this is the outcome. Isn't it? You'll see that a common phenomena in the profession today is that people are looking for more and more salary for which there is a job hopping, there is so many, you know, so many practices are there. Even in a job, we keep on looking for more and more salary or increment or something. But are we able to see whether we have been able to make out the total need that I have, that I have, isn't it? The total need for money or physical facilities. And have I been able to make out that this way, you know, how much time do I need to work so that I can be sure that, yes, my all needs are now going to be fulfilled. 
so we generally keep on looking for more without being able to make out what is sufficient does it happen does it happen we keep on looking for more without ever being able to make out what is sufficient and this becomes a kind of common trend if you look at the society today it has become a common trend we get bored of what we have we keep on looking for more and, and we are not sure what is sufficient what is happening here if my neighbor has got a new car i should also be going for a new car i visited my friend's house and he has got all the new fancy things in the drawing room and i need to have i have a 32 inch color tv my friend purchased 40 inch color tv or 42 inch perhaps that is the size and then i should you know go for the newer one right my tv does not get operated by alexa my neighbor's tv gets operated by alexa my children went to the neighbor's house and they saw this they come to us and tell us and we feel like the month uh, this month i am going to spend my salary going for a new tv so many things you can observe yes yeah namaste sir namaste uh, that's uh, i am getting a question myself uh, how to take this values to the unemployed our younger generation bhaiya okay see few things to note here unemployment is being discussed of course so first of all we need to see that do i have the skills to produce more than what i require one thing you know because many times we'll see that even though people have gone through the formal education they may not have right skills so do i have those skills one thing second thing am i ready to do physical work to produce more than what i require do i have the mindset of labor or not third thing have i been able to make out the need for physical facility fourth would be what all possibilities are there for me to apply my skills to ensure physical facilities through the skills right and next would be like if presently i do not have employment or any job through which i can fulfill my needs then i will not be planning to extend my family presently okay i will first ensure it i will try to be self reliant through production and then only uh, make a new family and go for procreation so if you look at it this way then we can see that there are ample opportunities if someone presently if you see if someone is ready to do physical work okay there are so many uh channels through which one can earn and earn reasonably also and then we have we have to keep enhancing our skills also so presently one common problem that is coming up is that uh in some if you look at the education formal technical education in some departments the admission has gone down like mechanical engineering electrical engineering civil engineering chemical engineering yes and yes, then yes. the faculty are not uh getting job there in those departments or the many many students in the faculty have been fired also right and that is primarily because after the pandemic it based courses or it skills have gained priority so like here i can look into upgrading my skills so that i can see what skills are not required to you know produce facilities because the skills have to be upgraded now so we can look into those things also so i have to keep on upgrading my skills to meet the requirements and this is always there presently if you see uh, if the auto driver does not know how to operate an app then people are not able to use that auto also because generally people do not have cash money and then they have to you know pay through apps so each one of us has to keep on upgrading our skills so we have to look into the need for physical facility we have to look into the need for skills in the society 
we have to learn and upgrade those skills and then we get employment that is quite possible only that there could be some adverse situations you know, in certain pockets in the society certain parts of society where some natural calamity has taken place or there is a lot of injustice in the society because of which people have to migrate those possibilities are there but if you look at an overall scenario then maybe i am not able to get employment in my neighborhood but i can get it outside isn't it yeah bhaiya that's one more thing bhaiya that's uh, in karnataka there is one place kaneri mart so they are not giving any education like certificate education since from the uh, fifth standard students i think fifth year students they are taking admission and formally they are not giving any uh, certification at all after 18 years this they are coming out by learning some skills as traditional skills so uh, what their motivation is not to become somebody's as an employee rather than they are developing them as an employer so that type of education if would have been included i think uh, this type of problem what we are looking in our society as an unemployment would have been resolved what i feel bhaiya yes bhaiya so uh, like we can even give some degree or something also that is also possible but the motivation behind the effort that you are mentioning is to make people employers and not employees but again even if you are an employer somebody will work as an employee so the issue is am i learning skills which can fulfill my need for physical facility or not maybe i am learning some skills which is not directly related to production in fact if you look at the condition of indian education in the past 30 or 40 years particularly after globalization a lot of change has taken place in the education formal education earlier we are having courses which were not directly related to production now they are not getting into the production and another change that has started now in the past 10 years is that now students are also into production while uh, learning while going through the formal education through internships through projects to live projects you know so many things are there so they are now better adapted in skills so if you look at the skill enhancement it has gone up and the skills are now more related with production as compared to the previous scenario but the problem is that if the education is not value based then they are employing those skills for getting into this loop that is the problem now just see like students who have done merely btech you know, are getting 40 50 lakhs of rupees some students not all are getting this much amount as a package but they still may not feel prosperous because they have now very big dreams of accumulation and indulgence so all those things are there in the society it all boils down to the same thing that we have to work for personal transformation so that there is societal transformation so that there is prosperity in every family and that is possible only with ensuring right understanding in every individual if you do not have a kind of formal program or a sustainable program to ensure right understanding in every individual so these kinds of ups and downs changes in scenarios will keep on taking place but ultimately the society is not going to be humane we are able to see that just by adding physical facilities neither my family is going to be prosperous nor the society is going to be prosperous so the problems as we get reports about are not the actual problems if you see isn't it yes, many yes, times yeah. we assign respect to our profession that this profession is respectable the other profession not respectable those kinds of things are also there and let me tell you one very big kind of trap that we get into it is called the somewhat middle class trap earlier maybe when i was not having enough money then i was uh, sharing auto for transportation now that i have i try to book an auto earlier i was using public transport now i go by my own car earlier i was using uh, locally made garments now i am going for branded clothes earlier i was using simple gadgets now i am going for elite gadgets now what is happening here ultimately 
earlier also i feel that i do not have enough money or enough physical facilities now the availability of physical facilities may have gone up multiple times but still i feel that i do not have ample amount of physical facilities because i have gone into that trap so how do i make out in fact if you see the graph between income and expenditure and this is something that we have taken as an assignment also people are deciding their expenditure by their income not by the need if they decide their expenditure by the need at some point of time they can see that my income is much more than what i need but that is not happening and then they have mul multiple arguments to you know uh, reason it out one argument is that if i consume more it people will produce more and there will be more employment in the society but that is not the case it is a fallacious argument because to keep on producing more and more and consume more and more i have to exploit the people i have to exploit the rest of nature the second argument that comes is then why i am earning and you know, if i do not have to consume more then what will i do with this money at one point of time we used to say that i do not have money and now we are saying that what will i do with this money you know, so we are going for more and more consumption is that true bhaiya is it happening yeah yeah bhaiya very very true bhaiya very true yeah. yeah thank you bhaiya thank you very much nice bhaiya so we have to look into all these problems that we generally keep on discussing in our institution in the society in the neighborhood more closely ultimately it will boil down to ensuring the right understanding and right feeling in the individual otherwise we can keep on producing more accumulating more consuming more but we are still in a in this loop now summer is coming and one family may plan to go to singapore another may plan to go to mauritius <laughs> and then you know again what we are trying to do we are trying to fetch happiness from outside and when we are talking to each other and we are comparing then we see that okay we are again at a loss we did not have merry making to that scale which the other person might have now all these things what is happening we are a part of this loop now so we have to take a closer look at all these practices in the society which become a norm also sometimes very nice yeah thank you bhaiya thank you very much nice bhaiya ji bhaiya we can go to the next slide uh yes please so i can observe the self and the body and this is something that we'll do at length in exercise 2 also that i am the consciousness body is material and there is only exchange of information between me and the material there is no material transaction between me and the body the transaction between the self and the body is only of information no material transaction is taking place and i give instruction to the body and i read sensation from the body so the transaction is in this manner there are instructions from self to the body and then sensation from the body to the self so the decision for every transaction is made by the self the decision to send instruction to the body is of the self the decision to read sensation from the body is also of the self so when i am saying something i am instructing the body to speak and i am instructing the body to read the slide isn't it every time whenever this transaction is taking place the decision is being taken by me and there is there is only this exchange of information between me and the body there is no material transaction now if you look at it this way and you try to analyze it further you can see that the taste that i get from the body through the five sense organs is only an information is a temporary information that information comes to me and then goes away so whatever sensation i get from the body is merely an information i associate happiness or unhappiness to that information so the only transaction between me and the body 
if this information it is both the ways but whether i am instructing the body or i am reading the sensation from the body it is my decision we'll observe it more closely when we are doing exercise 2 but if any question or doubt is there then you can ask ji bhaiya let us go to the next slide so we can see that i am there and my body is there now these two words i am okay so simply said right but am i sure of this that i am and we have written my body it's need it simply means that i am not the body so i am there and body is there so i am very much there i am not a part of the body and the body is not a part of mine also the two are two distinct realities i want to live the will to live is there in me my body is used as an instrument it's not the body that wants to live from the body i only get sensation for example let's say i am feeling the uh, hungry like i am getting some sensation from the body that there is lack of food in the body and i keep on getting that sensation from the body you know it's ultimately me who decide that i should be going for food or i can be without food also at times so presently if you see like you get some sensation of hunger from the body and you say that okay now it is 8 o'clock i must be getting breakfast by this time what has happened nobody is asking for breakfast and then you remember the okay it is now ratri time and i am on a fast so i do not have to take food and you simply decide that yes i do not want food now anymore so earlier i was asking for food and now i am not asking for food it is ultimately me who is deciding whether i should be going for food or not let's say there is some injustice in the society or there is some exploitation of the nature and i want to draw attention of the society of the government towards that so i may go on fast i may also say that i will go on fast unto death right so even if there is hunger in the body even if uh, i am getting regular sensation from the body for food it is demanding food but ultimately i decide that i will not be providing food to the body because this is a more important issue one professor of iit kanpur he wanted river ganga to be cleaned and the government was not paying attention so he went for fast unto death the government still did not pay attention and he ultimately died right going on that fast so he decided that he will not take food because the government is not paying attention to the cleaning of the river so the want to live is there in me not the body from the body i only get sensation and we also have to understand what is living means so my body is an instrument you know and i want to live it's not the body that wants to live ji bhaiya next please and it's not just that i want to live i want to live with continuous happiness physical facilities required for these three purposes which we discussed for nurturing the body protection of the body and right utilization of the body so i want to live and i want to live with happiness and i want to live with continuous happiness now i'll see that we can also relate this to our need for right understanding relationship and physical facility 
So to live, I need physical facility. To live with happiness, I need relationship. And to live with continuous happiness, I need right understanding. So to need to live with continuous happiness, I need all the three: right understanding, relationship, and physical facility. And physical facility is a very small part of my complete need, and it is not my need; it is need of the body. So I do not need physical facility for myself; I need it for the body, and it is required only for three purposes. Now, if I look at my program, right? What is my program? It is to understand and to live in harmony, right, from oneself to the entire existence. And this becomes my complete program to understand and to live accordingly, so that it ensures mutual happiness, or let's say within self, it ensures continuous happiness. So to understand and to live in harmony at all levels of being, from self to the entire existence, is my program for action for continuous happiness. And when I look at the complete program of mine, production, protection, and right utilization of physical facility is a part of my program. It's not my complete program. So you'll see that I need physical facility only from time to time. In fact, I utilize my body also only from time to time. For example, we had a nice sleep, right? We rested our body on the bed and we slept. We woke up after six to eight hours, right? And during that time, I was not utilizing my body. The body was taking rest. I was active within me. If I was doing something yesterday and it intrigued me somehow, and it, there was a lot of thought in me, I was imagining something. I was analyzing something, and that might be going on within me during sleep. I was just active. I was not using my body. So you'll see that I need physical facility only from time to time. I utilize my body also only from time to time. So in fact, utilizing the body is also utilizing the body also is a small part of my program. It is not the complete program. My complete program is to ensure right understanding, right feeling, right thought within the self, and to ensure physical facility for the body, and to utilize the body for fulfilling my basic aspiration. So when I make a program for the physical facility, I can very much see that it cannot be the entire program of my life. It is just a part of my program. This is something that we might be doing also. We cannot produce all the time. We cannot protect the physical facility all the time. But yes, now when you say right utilization of physical facility, so that also do from time to time because I utilize my body only for from time to time. So I utilize the physical facility also from time to time. It is a small part of my program, and that's how it has been mentioned as less than one fourth, right? This number is not very important, but it is just indicating that I live at four levels, at the level of individual, family, society, and nature. And since I require physical facility for the body at the level of individual, so we are calling it as less than one fourth. But this is just a rough articulation to draw your attention that physical facility cannot be my complete program of life. I cannot aim for physical facility just you know, to ensure a happy life because happiness is not going to be ensured through this. G. If any reflection is there, we can share. Nice, boy. I think we all are clear about this. But it may also happen that certain things by listening again and again, we might assume that yes, it is not clear. But am I observing it sharply? Just try to be sincere on that part. That am I trying to observe it sharply in my living? Ji, bhaiya. Click it once. We can also see that I am the seer, I am the doer, and I am the enjoyer or experiencer. The body is merely an instrument. So I use the body as an instrument to fulfill my program. I am the seer means I am the one who sees, who observes, who knows. I am the doer means I, I, the, I am the one who takes decisions. It's not the body. And I am the one who feels happy or unhappy. We generally say that I am feeling unhappy and there is pain in the body. We don't say that the body is unhappy. No, 
I am unhappy, right? And the body is in pain. Let's say there is some pain in the body, then we use this kind of language. The body doesn't feel unhappy or happy. It's me, I, who feels happy or unhappy. So I'm the enjoyer. So having said all this, I think, you know, let us observe it for some time. We'll take five minutes of time. Look at this table. Raju ji. Ji, namaste bhaiya. Namaste sabhi ko. Namaste. Uh, bhaiya, I have seen that I have the severe pain in my head. I have the severe pain in my head. So at that time, can I say that uh, this is is the pain for head but it is observing observed by the me ji bhaiya yeah so the pain is there in the head and yeah. i am getting the sensation yes quite true so the pain is there in the body and i am getting that sensation ji bhaiya main times you, you see when I'm able to see this clearly, that the pain is not inside me, the pain is in the body, and I'm observing it, and I'm associating some meaning to it. Many people have said that their problem of migraine or certain things have come down. Because earlier, no, when they used to get this kind of sensation from the body, they were quite upset, they were reactive, they were angry, you know, and that uh, caused the pain further. But now, then you do not associate that kind of meaning. The pain is there in the body, not me. And nothing is going to happen of me. I am going to be there. Then I am continuous in it. When this clarity is there in me, then I can observe the sensation also sharply and take some corrective action also. Ji, bhaiya. Ji. 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 Ji, bhaiya. Got it. Received, bhaiya. Ji. Namaste, bhaiya. Ji. Namaste. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, all. Uh, one thing is not very clear to me is that when at the time of death, when the body parts cease to work, they are no further able to do their activities. In that case, there is no alternative for the self to live. So in that case, it is the body becomes more important the body functioning becoming more important. So how do you see that? See, body functioning is always important. Not only on that occasion. It is always important. I have to keep on regulating the body you know, with right understanding so that the body works properly. The body is healthy. It is always important. But the point is that I am not the body and the body is my instrument. So the instrument is important. Fine. But the problem arises when I consider myself to be the instrument. Now at the time of death also, this instrument is not working properly. When I'm able to see this clearly, that it's me who wants to live, right? Not the body. Yeah. And I want to be happy in continuity, not the body. And the body is a mere temporary unit, which was working as an instrument. Then I can leave the body happily. I am assured of my existence, that I am going to be there. I am not the body. I was never the body. I was only with the body. When I took birth, I associated with the body. Now when the body is dying, I am dissociating from the body. As simple as this. I can see this very clearly. Then I can you know, be free of any kind of fear, any kind of apprehension. That's how it is very important that we see that I'm not the body, I'm different from the body. And it has, uh, I'll say, <coughs> impact on all aspects of our living. Because you see that you are sitting by yourself in your room and you are not clear about this. Something happens to the body. You are getting some sensation from the body and you are in fear. Oh, what will happen of me if the body is gone? A common assumption also could be like, if the body is gone, everything is gone. Nothing remains. If that is the case, then I am always living in fear. I am having that seed of unhappiness always within me. All the time. And that gets, that gets triggered when I am alone. That gets triggered when I am in isolation. And 
it is a cause of unhappiness all the time in me. If I'm not clear that I'm not the body, this kind of source of unhappiness is there in me all the time. Yeah. But uh, the thing is that we must very strongly believe that, yes, we are different and we are going to stay, even if body perishes. No, no, like... no, not at all required to believe. But do know. See, if you believe, then it is something which is shaky. At yes, yes. It's right to what is no. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Not to believe, but no, to know. Yes. To see. Yes, yes. So I can very much see that I'm not the body. I am different from the body. I am at a distance from the body. Located in the same point in space, but I am at a distance from the body. I am different from the body. I can see this very clearly. Only thing that I have to assign the priority to this observation, and then I can see. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you. Nice, Pija. Where, when we say uh, the self is continuous in space and time, then what does it mean? Like I want to live, or say uh, I want to live with continuous happiness, or I am just here to live. It means when I is associated with uh, the body or the instruments, then yes, it it does a meaning like uh, here to here and enjoy. But when I am not associated with the body, or say once the continuity of I is there, then uh, the meaning of leave or you know life. Yeah. Yes. How can we say? But that's what I was uh, hinting at. That in fact, if you try to uh, further qualify this statement, so I want to be would be a better statement. So I am there and I want to be, and I am there. I want to be and I will always be. So when I observe this with right understanding, I can see that living with the body or associating with the body is temporary. But my being is continuous. So to begin with, I will observe that I want to live. But basically, I want to be. And it is always there. So my want is going to be fulfilled anyway. So there is no question to the fulfillment of my want. So that provision is already there. I want to be and I am going to be there. Yes. And the body is temporary. It is going to be temporary. Today or tomorrow I will get dissociated from the body. So if you qualify the second statement further, it will mean that I want to be. I am and I want to be. And the two are the same with right understanding. I am there. I want to be and I am going to be there. There is no question about it. So further yeah, qualifying, yeah, yeah. you can see that I want to be with continuous happiness. Living is temporary. But for a comp, like for a uh, normal, uh, we can say when we start discussing, we cannot qualify the statements to that extent. Otherwise, people will not be able to relate because people are more concerned about living, not being. So that's how we begin with uh, talking about living that we want to live with happiness. Otherwise, the right statement would be, I want to be with happiness. Thank you so much. Nice, Bina. Uh, Bhaiya, namaste, namaste, Sabiko. Uh, Bhaiya, when we are discussing about this, that is, I want to be. Uh, so, uh, are we talking about the immortality of the self? Uh, that is, it is uh, ever pervading uh, with the, all these, uh, uh, you know, with the feeling that I want to be always happy and con and continuity of happiness. So doesn't that also say that I have an urge of being always uh, uh, in a particular state? I mean, uh, I want that uh, there's something to do with my existence. Is it like that? So let me modify statements like I am immortal. Yes, that is there. So, I am a continuous unit. That simply means I am immortal. Okay? But I am not ever or pervading. Ever is a space. Space is there for all time, all space, you know, in all places. I am not there in all places. 
I am there for all time, but not in all places. So I am continuous, but not ever. And I am not pervading also, like space. The space is all pervading. I am not all pervading. I am a unit with a form, with some property, and I am there in you know, this existence at some point, at some place. Right. And like I want to be with right understanding, right feeling, which is my desired state in which the continuity of happiness is a natural outcome. Ji. Okay. Uh, Bhaiya, but then uh, in that case, if I'm, uh, then that how that continuity exists. Now, supposing I'm not in existence, that is, I'm a unit in the space. So space, as you said, is all pervading. It is everywhere. Yes. So then that that supposing my body perishes, like uh, as we are saying that we are diff two entities. So my body perishes, but I am there. So then yes. I am existing. Yes. So I will continue to exist. Yes, very much. Okay. Okay, Bhaiya. Thank you so much, Bhaiya. Nice. We are going to be there, <laughs> though we are not able to connect <laughs> to the <world. laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it seems a little complicated, actually. We have to contemplate on this. Not complicated. This is simple. See, complication arises when you mix so many things. Otherwise, it is very simple. I am there. I am going to be there. Yeah, namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. Bhaiya, my question The question is, uh, is it possible to be happy and continuous when we come out of the loop of associating or dissociating with the body? So for that only, I have to try the instrument, the body rightly, so that it ensures, it helps me in ensuring right understanding, right feeling in me. So that happiness becomes innate nature of mine. I do not have to fetch happiness from body or something outside. That's what the body is meant for. That's, uh, Bhaiya, that's unhappiness or something will come when we are, when the self associates with the body only. That's when it no, is not, not seeing that. the body. I'm not seeing that. Unhappiness is there in the self, not in the body. It's only that the preconditionings in me get triggered through the body. So when I'm communicating with the body, right? So the uh, preconditionings or the lack of right feeling gets triggered. So unhappiness is there already in me. It's only that the body is working as a triggering object for my body or for myself. So the body is only triggering those things inside me. I'm unhappy. It's not that once I leave the body, there is no unhappiness. No. Yeah, otherwise, that's... yeah. Otherwise, what does it mean that all the unhappiness is there in the body, not me? That's not true. Unhappiness is inside me, and that is merely in a lack of harmony in me. And that's what we are working for. We are exploring using the body as an instrument so that we are able to ensure the right understanding of harmony within. Yeah, can we other way say that uh, unhappiness is also innate if it is already there within the body, yeah, uh, within the Not cell? Really. Body. Yeah. So two things. Being inside and being innate are two different things. Innate means it is my natural acceptance. So it is not innate. So it is there in me. But it is not innate to me. Because at some point of time, I am going to get rid of it. Through self-exploration. So what is going to continue is happiness. Not unhappiness. <laughs> yes, unhappiness yeah, cannot continue. Yes. Yes, Bhaiya. Nice, Bhaiya.